Here are 10 common DJ mistakes that you can avoid for a successful DJ career. The first mistake I notice DJs doing is playing poor quality audio. If you're watching this, then there's probably a 98% chance that you've downloaded a song from YouTube using a YouTube ripper. I won't judge you for that. Collecting a catalogue of music can be expensive. There's DJ pools, subscriptions, streaming subscriptions, purchasing individual tracks. It's a lot. But let me tell you now, if you think a track sounds bad on your laptop, just wait until you get to a venue with a big, loud sound system. Everything is amplified tenfold. Just take this track as an example. If you listen through headphones, one is ripped from YouTube. The other is downloaded from a record pool. So why does this sound so bad? It's because most of these YouTube rips and SoundCloud rips only let you download in a 128 kbps file. But what is kbps? Well, bitrate is measured in terms of kbps. I won't bore you with more boring stuff. Here's a graphic. Feel free to pause the video and see the pros and cons to 128 kbps versus 320 kbps. So why don't I just play WAV files? They're the best quality. True, but the trade-off is space. Working DJs need hundreds if not thousands of tracks. This will soon eat into your hard drive. However, if you're playing an hour set here or there, then try using WAVs. But in my opinion, in a club or in a venue, absolutely nobody in the crowd will tell the difference between 320 and a WAV. The second common mistake I notice DJs doing is not reading a crowd. This is a surefire way to have a short DJ career. An element to this is experience. Of course, you're not going to become a master overnight at reading a crowd, but there's also a huge amount of common sense that can be applied. I see a lot of DJs in a club with their head down the whole time. The biggest tip I can give you is look at your crowd. It doesn't matter if there's 50 people or 5,000 people. Scenario number one, you're playing a small bar of 50 people. A group of friends are socializing in the corner. Step one, test a few tracks quickly. Try to get a few genres mixed in the first 10 or 20 minutes. Are they singing the words? Are they standing up dancing? What track made them get up? Lean into that. Okay, they like Candy Shop. Maybe play some commercial hip hop. Let me play some Snoop Dogg, Nicki Minaj, Nelly, Drake. Now they're up dancing and they're even requesting songs in that genre. Scenario number two, it's a big venue. You're DJing to a thousand people and you're playing all night long. It gets to around 1 a.m. You get your head up and realize it's gone a little bit stale. Maybe it's time to reach into your club bangers folder for the next 30 minutes. Do you need to grab a microphone and interact with a crowd? Get them to put their lights in the air, get them to put their hands in the air. Have you played too much of what you like? Let's just try dropping a familiar vocal over this techno track and see if they sing along. All of a sudden, you're playing club bangers. You're interacting with the crowd, getting them dancing, singing along. DJing completed. The number three thing is thinking you're better than everyone else. DJing is a very solo career. It's all down to you. You're not part of a team. The skills and dedication all comes down to you and your efforts. You can easily get caught up in your own hype. Have you ever had these questions? If that was me, I would have done this differently. He's not even using CDJs. Why is she playing a track that's outdated? That wasn't even in key. This will negatively impact you in ways that you don't even know about. Think about the next time you come to record a mix for your socials. Here's what's going to go through your head. Should I have done this differently? Will I get roasted for not using CDJs? Is this track still a banger? Is it still current? Are these tracks in key? All of a sudden, the questions become a barrier to your creativity. You stop making content and you're filled with this destructive mindset. And if you don't have any DJ content, you'll struggle to find consistent gigs. The next tip is not filming your sets. You have a phone, use it. Sure, it would be nice to have a camera crew filming you at every event, editing all of your videos. It would also be nice if a DJ was what a DJ used to be, and that's somebody who turns up, plays music to a crowd, and leaves. But we all know content is king, and social proof will help you immensely in getting gigs and sustaining them. Playing a house party, film it. Playing a friend's birthday party, film it. Playing a restaurant, wedding, bar mitzvah, guess what? 
film it. Then put it on your social media because you never know who's watching. I mainly play in clubs, but I get messages like these all of the time because there's hundreds of videos of my sets out there and you never know who's watching. Number five and the next tip is lack of self-promotion. This point coincides with the previous tip. It's a good thing to let people know where you are, what you're doing, how you're doing it and when you're doing it. We have built a whole course dedicated to getting you gigs. In fact, I'll leave a free lesson from that course and a free PDF cheat sheet in the description below for you to download. Here's what I want you to do. Write down 10 places that you would like to DJ. Then find out 10 people who work at those places. This could be a manager, a promoter, bar staff, a DJ, a receptionist, it doesn't matter. Use Facebook, use LinkedIn, use Instagram, whatever. Just write them down. Then I want you to film between 10 and 20 pieces of content. If you need help on how to film DJ content, then check out this video here. This won't take you long. You can do this in a day or two. Upload the content to your socials over the course of a month. You can upload every day or every other day. Again, if you don't know how to batch create or schedule content, check out the How To Get Gigs course. There's multiple, multiple lessons on this. Now, once you've uploaded the content, reach out to the people that you wrote down and connect with them. Show them your content. Don't be pushy. Just say, hey, my name's Lawrence. I'm a DJ looking for some experience or I'm a DJ with a couple years of experience. If you ever need a reliable DJ who can play multi-genre, feel free to get in touch. Drinking on the job. Believe me, I'm not going to preach to you about having a drink when you're DJ. It comes hand in hand with the territory, depending on what type of DJ you want to be and what venues you're playing at. The issue is when it becomes a habit and you've got to rely on being drunk to calm your nerves or get on a microphone or play music that you're not that into. In my experience, I've seen this trend happen to many DJs who then start to fall out of love or even hate DJ, especially if you're working five or six nights a week, constantly waking up with a hangover, then 12 hours later, you're back on your first Jaeger bomb. It will become a very toxic trait quickly. The second issue is unprofessionalism. I've seen DJs spill drinks all over the equipment. I've seen DJs take a in the DJ booth, inviting all their friends up, causing chaos, being rude to customers, being rude to staff, the list goes on. This could very quickly lead you to having a bad reputation in your area. Word of mouth between DJ circles and event industries spreads very quickly and you'll soon find yourself with no gigs and no way back very soon. Not playing requests. I listen to every single request. Do I always play them? Absolutely not. But unless you're a headline artist who is there to play their own tracks, then taking requests is like an extension of reading a crowd. If you're playing a commercial house venue and three people come up to you and ask for some Drake, that's a pretty big red flag that you're not catering to your crowd. Play some Drake. Requests can take you on a journey that you wasn't expecting to be on. Some of my favorite DJ sets have come from playing random requests. Let's say someone requests some disco at your hip hop event. What's the worst that can happen? You know at least one group of people are going to want to hear that so you don't have to be embarrassed about playing some disco. You look up, nobody's booing, nobody's confused, nobody's angry, everyone's just vibing. All of a sudden, you're in your disco folder. You're pulling out all the disco bangers and you've taken the crowd by surprise. You're on a journey, they're on a journey. Who knows where it's going to end, but we're loving it. By the way, we've got more common mistakes coming up on our channel that DJs make and that you can avoid. We've also got some exciting product launches and loads of transition tutorials coming up. So hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of that content. Relying on sync. In fact, relying on any type of beat matching tool is risky. In our DJ courses, which you can find here, we teach the fundamental part of DJing first, which is listening and learning to DJ by ear. These two tracks are at the same BPM, but listen, as I mix and hit sync, they go out of time and sound awful. This is because the software has analyzed the track incorrectly. So we need to learn how to correct this using our ears. There's also the issue of when you get to a venue, they may have completely different gear to what you're used to at home, different brand, different layout, etc. This is why we need to master the fundamentals of DJing so we don't get stuck at a gig. 
Turning down gigs. Is there such thing as a bad gig? Bruh. Probably. Let's talk about the two types of DJs this tip refers to. Firstly, the beginner. If you're just starting out, you won't have the option of picking and choosing which gigs you get. Experience is the absolute goal here. I took every single gig anyone would give me in the first year of my DJ life. And getting over the fear of messing up a mix, dealing with drunk people at house parties, taking a request to play a TikTok track from a 10 year old at a kid's party, it's all preparing you for real DJ life. The second type of DJ this tip is aimed at is those DJs who don't have consistent gigs. I get it, you may have a vision for what DJ you wanna be, and that's all good. You wanna play house music, so why would you take an R&B gig? Loads of reasons. Experience is the main reason. Can you research, find, play, and react to a crowd that you don't understand? That's a powerful skill. Increasing your knowledge of music is also a factor. Increasing your opportunity to have a consistent income. Let's say you love melodic techno. What are the chances there's a melodic techno night seven days a week in your town? Probably zero chance, but there's probably a house night, a drum bass night, an R&B night, a comedy club that needs a warm-up DJ, a private event that needs open format, an engagement party that needs disco. This will create you more and more connections and more and more opportunities then you can begin to zero in on gigs that actually excite you. Thinking you need expensive DJ gear. As you're watching this video, as we're dropping it, you'll have seen the new A9 mixer and the shiny Opus quad standalone come out and you might be getting FOMO. Watching your favorite DJs doing crazy routines is awesome, inspiring, and improving your skills should absolutely be a fun process and a journey that you should stay on. But think about it. Apart from a headline act at a show, how many events and clubs and parties have you been to where the DJ is doing crazy transitions and mashups and scratch routines all night long? Almost none, right? Yet thousands of DJs around the world are getting regular gigs consistently week on week. The point is, the fundamentals of DJing can be learned on any piece of equipment. Beat matching, phrasing, timing, song selection, EQs, song selection, filters, and oh yes, song selection. These are the backbone to every successful DJ. And these techniques can be learned on any piece of equipment. Sure, slip roll, pitch play, and changing the color of your decks is cool, but in all honesty, at a five hour gig to a corporate crowd at a Christmas party, are you really gonna need all that stuff? If you enjoyed this video, then check out this video on how to get more gigs. And remember, in the description, there's a free lesson from our gigs course and a free PDF for you to download right now.